revolutionary.org podcast coming your way. It's another episode, guys. This time we're going to do Aromasin. Steve Smee here and Rick. How's it going, buddy? Hey, what's up, Steve? What's up, guys? How's everybody doing out there? Yeah, Rick's enjoying the beach life today. He's uh, he's uh, actually filming this on the on the beach. So you're on the beach, right, Rick? <laughs> so, so with the software we're using to record the podcast, I can put a uh, custom backgrounds. So I put a little uh, beach background. Looks real nice. Like it. All right, guys. So let's talk about Romanson, guys. It's the trade name for Exemistane. And it's a drug that's mostly used in medicine to treat breast cancer in women. Very, very, you know, well, well-known drug. Um, it's a modern aromatized inhibitor. Very similar to Arimidex, but there are some differences. So in this podcast, we're going to talk about the differences. And then on the next episode, we talk about Arimidex. So you guys can check out that episode also next week when it comes out. So again, aromasin guys, suicide aromatase inhibitor, meaning it permanently disables that aromatized enzyme once it binds to it. So in plain English, aromasin does a great job of preventing the currently bound enzymes from rebounding. So you don't have to worry about estrogen rebounding after cycle. That's what makes it different from the other AIs in its class. So we're going to talk about all this, guys, but first I want to bring in Rick. Rick is the history expert. He's got a lot of history on aromasin that is really interesting. So tell us a little bit about the history. Actually, aromasin is not a ton of history behind it. It was approved by the FDA in 1999, and it really didn't hit the underground hard until about uh, 2005, 2006, started to become real popular. Even though in 1999, Arimidex uh, Xemistane was already out there and being used and it was uh, FDA approved, Arimidex was more available in the underground because Arimidex had been approved for use several years earlier. And it just takes just an extra couple of years for the black market to get their hands on this stuff, for generics to be produced. So that is the reason why um, we didn't see Aromacin hit the market until a few years after Arimidex was already on the black market, even though they were both around around the same time. Just to let you guys know, Aromacin is it. Aromacin is really the aromatase inhibitor that bodybuilders prefer. If you're a man injecting steroids and you need something to prevent the aromatization of those steroids into estrogens, Aromacin is it. Arimidex, Letrosol, some of the other ones we're gonna be discussing on this podcast later on, they're just there and they'll see use sometimes, but the preferred one is really aromasin. And now I, Novadex is also one that is preferred, but they both work real differently. And I'll go over just how they work differently here real quickly. Uh, Novadex goes and attaches to the estrogen receptor and keeps real estrogen out, specifically from the glands under your nipples when you're trying to prevent kind of comastia. The way aromasin works, on the aromatase enzyme is like an aromatase enzyme can actually go and attach to several different testosterone units and turn them all into estrogen units, right? Real simple there. Now, aromasin will sit there and it'll present itself as a suitable structure for the aromatase enzyme to get to work on. And it does, the aromatase enzyme attaches to aromasin. But when it attaches to it, it can't let go. It becomes bound, it becomes one structure. So now that aromatase enzyme that would normally be able to unlatch and go and and hit several other hormones now can't do that. And obviously the cells that make the aromatase enzyme will continue to produce uh, the amount the next day and the next day. So this is why you use the product every day. You use aromacin every day. And what it does is it just takes these enzymes, the aromatase enzymes that would normally go and convert several units, many units of testosterone it goes and, and, and it would convert several units. This is why when you inject more testosterone, then you just make more estrogen, even with the same enzymes. Because if you give the enzymes more to work on, it'll just turn more structures into estrogens. But when, it, when that enzyme hits aromasin, it can't let go. It becomes bound. It gets excreted out of the system. So now that enzyme is not there and you have your androgens, your testosterone, your dianable, your equipoise. 
you know, these steroids that you would normally worry about aromatization with, now you don't because that enzyme, at least for that, for that span of time, is, is going out of the system. So that's just a little difference on how, uh, how it works. Remedex, Letro, we're going to discuss in, in later podcasts, work differently. You get a rebound. The enzymes make more afterwards. But aromacin, it's, it's the preferred one, at least for men on steroids. Aromacin seems to be the one that everybody prefers. So one of the other thing, good things about aromacin, too, is a gentle AI. So Rick was alluding to the steroids, the certain aromatizing steroids that he alluded to. Again, testosterone, all the testosterone esters, the nandrolones, the dianabol, the boldenone, et cetera, these convert to estrogen in the body. So if you don't control that, you can run into the side effects, not just the ones Rick was mentioning, the, the gynecomastia, the bitch test, the water retention, but also it has a domino effect. It can affect, it, it's going to affect your blood pressure. It's going to affect your heart health. It's going to affect your sleep. You'll notice you'll start getting insomnia where you can't sleep at night because you're carrying all this water. You feel tired during the day. Just imagine carrying jugs of water 24-7 all day. Of course, you're going to feel tired. So it's important to control your estrogen. But the misconception, and this comes from the old school guys, back maybe in the 90s who came around in the 90s, maybe maybe late 80s, when Electro came around, is that they slammed their estrogen too much. And when you slam your estrogen too much, that's also not good. We still need estrogen as men. We need estrogen to function properly. So, you know, if you slam your estrogen too much, you're going to start getting issues, mood problems, depression, achy joints. You're going to have a hard time building muscle. You're going to have a hard time getting stronger. It's going to affect other problems as well, having low estrogen. So you got to remember, low estrogen is not good either. So one of the things that I like about Romacin is it's a very gentle, gentle AI. It doesn't slam your estrogen, and it doesn't have um, a lot of bad things that come with it like some of the other AIs out there. So, yeah, I mean, look, for the context of the podcast today, uh, yes, aromacin is very effective at getting rid of, of the aromatase enzyme so that you don't have a lot of your steroids being converted to estrogen. So we're, that is the context of today's podcast. But really, you don't want to crush your estrogen. You know, when you take Dianabol, you're counting on some of that conversion into methylstradiol to actually help your gains. You know, you need that estrogen in there along with the androgens to help your gains and just overall health. You don't want to crush your estrogen. If you lower your estrogen too much, you're going to have problems with your lipid profiles a lot early on in your cycle. Cholesterol will just get out of whack a lot quicker if you crush your estrogen. You're also more prone to injuries in your joints if you crush your estrogen. You might also develop problems with your dick if you crush your estrogen. You're going to sit there and blame it on the DECA, blame it on the trend. And all along, would you just overdid the AIs? So that is conversation for another podcast, and we'll definitely cover that. But just keep that in mind today as we go through, through aromacin today and how it works. We're not suggesting that you need to crush your estrogen on cycle. That is not ideal. Yeah, so you're going to find that it doesn't, one size doesn't fit all. You have to learn your body, understand yourself, look in the mirror, see how you feel, look at your blood results. And let it be a combination of everything. And look, if you don't use a ton of stuff, if you're not like smashing a couple of grams of juice per week, you're not going to have to worry that much about side effects and taking ancillaries and doing all that stuff. So if you just keep your, your dosing in a really conservative realm, it'll just be a lot easier to manage everything. Yeah, so what is the difference between a Romus and a Remix? A lot of guys ask, look, at the end of the day, and then they just use, you know, if you can get your hands on either one, that's fine. Some guys will, if you ever like go to anti-aging clinics or go through a doctor for, you know, for your testosterone, the doctor may have never even heard of aromacin because aromacin is so new in, in medicine. Isn't that crazy? But it's true. They'll actually um, pre uh, prescribe a Rimidex over aromacin. Most doctors will. If you find a doctor that actually prescribes aromacin, I, I'd be really impressed by them uh, because they've 
that means they've modernized. Maybe they're a younger doctor. Maybe they've modernized. But like any profession, you know, doctors tend to, they tend to be old school. They tend to stick with what they've known for many, many years. And a lot of them don't even know aromasin exists. So you may want to talk to your doctor about getting on aromasin instead of arimidix because the main advantage, as we discussed earlier on the show, is that aromasin is going to prevent any estrogen rebound. Now, it isn't very common to see that, but I have seen it. Guys will come off steroids, they'll go through their PCT, they'll start their bridge phase, and then during the bridge phase, their estrogen issues come flaring back. I've seen it. That's estrogen rebound, and it does happen. And you can actually get hit with gyno from estrogen rebound. That's actually one of the main side effects of estrogen rebound. So it does happen. So if possible, I always recommend aromasin, but let's say your doctor doesn't know anything about aromasin. He puts you on aromidex or your source only has aromidex. That's going to do too. But we always prefer aromasin. Now, aromasin versus letro. That's another one guys want to know. Hey, how can I use Letro? I heard some guy on YouTube say to use Letro. Yes. A lot of guys on social media will tell you to use Letro as in your AI. And again, it's because they have outdated information. Letro has a purpose, okay? But it's not one an AI you want to use on cycle to balance estrogen levels. It's something you want to use to crush estrogen levels. It's extremely harsh. So again, I strongly recommend aromasin over letro. So aromasin beats letro and it beats arimidex all day and night. So side effects. Let's start getting into side effects, Rick. Aromasin, listen, if you run it correctly, you're not going to have issues. The problem is a lot of guys don't run it correctly because they're under the impression, they're, they have that old school mentality of, I want to slam estrogen, I want to slam estrogen, I want to slam estrogen. And in the old days, when these AIs first came around, this is what guys would do. They would slam their estrogen down because the, I'm not going to call it bro science, Rick, but the thought process, which is kind of correct, is if you slam estrogen ahead of PCT, it'll give your testosterone a chance to rebound. That is true, but we found much better ways to do PCT over the past 10 to 20 years where you don't have to slam estrogen and you don't have to basically kill all your gains and kill your mood and kill your libido and kill everything by slamming estrogen down. So Rick, tell us a little bit about that strategy because you've been around a long time. Talk about that strategy originally on message boards where guys would always want to slam estrogen during PCT, crush it to nothing because they felt like, yeah, I rebounded testosterone. Yeah, there was a lot of misunderstandings at the start. Guys thinking you could just crush your estrogen, you didn't need it. But we found out real early on in the use of these drugs that you have some really bad side effects if you lower your estrogen too much. And the side effects are felt right away. Injuries, problems with libido, cholesterol levels, heart, you know, just having a hard time coming back uh, during PCT. So a lot of issues that, ar that arose from, from guys just overusing this stuff. And, you know, we learned early on, it didn't take a long time for, for guys to realize that. And I still think even today, guys are still just overusing some of this stuff. They, 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 they use high dosages and then they put, they slam on the, the anti-estrogens and then they, they think that the problem is the steroids. They think that they need more. They need, you know, two grams. And sometimes it's not that. If you just let it aromatize a little bit, ride the estrogen along with the androgens, you get some really good results, you know, and not just water weight guys, but you're actually going to get some long lasting mass it just that, you know, don't, don't slam it. I think that's probably one of the worst abuses I see is the overuse of these anti-estrogens. And that comes with just these high dosages that guys are on now, just these really high doses that are unnecessary. And you hear it all the time, right? Uh, oh, take Dianabol, but you need to take aromacin with it. Wait a minute. Dianabol has been used since the 60s. 
And Romanson hasn't been around until 1999, we just discussed. So, oh, what, what, whatever did we do with Diana Ball all those years before Romanson came around? I'll tell you what we did. Did not take too much and rode that estrogen blow, rode that all the way to some serious gains. And then when guys slam a Romanson on top of your Diana Ball, you're just not gaining that mass. You're not getting all of it. I've said this before in the podcast. If, you, if you're afraid of getting a little bit bloated, then don't use Diana Ball. Use Terena Ball. Use something else. But to use Diana Ball and then put a Romanson on top of it, it's kind of silly. Now, if you're using Diana Ball with testosterone, different story. You better know your body. You better know how much you need to use because now you're stacking two steroids that are going to aromatize on you. But, you know, don't, don't overuse it. And especially with something like Diana Ball, no need to overdo it. All right, guys. So how – the great question is how do we not overdo it? So, um, you know, this is a very frustrating thing. A lot of clients come to me. Um, they always want to know, they're like, Steve, you know, how much AI do I need? And I'm like, dude, I, I can't help you. They're like private messaging me on the forums and stuff. How much AI do I need? You know, blah, blah. I'm like, dude, I don't even know what you're running. How am I supposed to answer that question? Even if I knew what you were running, I can give you a rough estimate of how much AI you need, but it's not going to be 100% on the money because you need to run blood work. When I put you on this protocol, you need to run blood work. You have to work with me to get you on the right dosage. So I always recommend, you know, when you're running a cycle, let's say you're running 500 milligrams of testosterone a week. You know, you could start running like 12 and a half milligrams of aromacin every day or every other day and then see what happens from there. Don't slam your estrogen too much. And you don't want to be lean on it too because 500 milligrams of testosterone is going to cause estrogen issues. So we don't want you to bloat like a fish, right? So you're going to start with that. Then you're going to run blood work after, you know, about three weeks on and you're going to see where your estrogen levels are. If your estrogen levels are too high, then obviously you need to up your AI a little bit. If your estrogen levels are too low, you need to back off on your AI a little bit. It's a balance. You have to balance it out. So in a lot of guys, you know, they, they always want to answer this question. And it's frustrating for me because, you know, I really want to help guys. But at the end of the day, I can only give you a rough estimate of how much you need. You have to decide at the end of the day how much to use based on your body based on your blood work of course i'll work with you if i see can see your blood work that would be fantastic you can go get blood work done if you go on the forum steve smi look at my signature i have a link to how you can get blood work done for about 70 some dollars that would tell you literally the next day you get blood work done the next day you can see your estrogen levels and then we can adjust your ai dose from there that's the only way to do it so there, there isn't any magic dosage that I can tell you. It just depends on what you're running. If you're running DECA, lots of DECA, lots of tests, lots of DBOL, three aromatizing compounds all in a cycle, you're going to need more of an AI than if you were running 300 milligrams of tests with 500 milligrams of Primo and 500 milligrams of Mastron. They're both three compound cycles. But in one situation, you're running three aromatizing compounds all in one. The other situation, you're running an aromatizing compound at a sensible dose, and then you're running two compounds, which don't aromatize. And in the case of Masteron, there is evidence, and I've seen this in blood work, that it actually helps control your estrogen in its own merit. So you're probably not going to need much of an AI in that situation. In fact, you won't. I can, I can tell you that. But in the first situation, DECA, Debel, and test, lots of it, you're going to blow it up. You're going to blow it up like 20 pounds of water, and you don't want to do that on a cycle. What do you think, Rick? Yeah, so aromasin is just one of those compounds, just not much to say about it. You know, you might, you, if you just keep your dosing on the low end, you might be able to do steroids for years and never quite need it. Novadex which blocks estrogen from creating gynecomastia, which to me is, is the real danger, the real long-term 
side effect uh, or the only side effect that you might need to get an operation for, you might need to go under the knife and have surgery to remove is really that gynecomastia. And Novodex takes care of that. If you just keep your dosing low and you make this a, a long-term commitment to your health, your goals, you can do very mild cycles, a little bit of Novodex on top, Never exceed more than a gram of steroids total. If you can do it within five to 700, you're fine. Post cycle therapy properly. If you can really do all of these things, if you keep your dose in low, you can go, you can go ahead and never have to mess with it. You may not, never need it. And Novodex will be enough to just keep gyno out. But yeah, for guys doing the higher dosing, guys going into competition, yeah, you are gonna, you're going to need to mess with it. And going on to competition, guys drop their estrogen pretty darn low. And yeah, it's just a good tool to use when you're using a bunch of compounds and you want to drop your estrogen low even further. It's, it has its place for the guys doing a lot of stuff and guys competing and trying to dry up really, really hard. But for most of us, if you keep your dosing mild, you'll be fine. You, don't, you, won't, you won't need to mess with it much. All right, guys. So another misconception that guys have is about the half-life. And the half-life of aromacin is over 24 hours. So you don't have to dose it two times a day or three times a day. You can get away with dosing every day or every other day very, very easily. It's going to be in your system. If you dose it every other day or every third day even, it's still going to be in your system. So you don't have to do all this or like, oh, my God, I'm injecting, I'm injecting this. I got to take my aromacin. You know, I'm injecting this. I got to take my aromacin every day. Not necessarily. Every, every, every day, every other day, every third day just depends on the situation. But, you know, look, I mean, it's in your system a long time. You got you to gotta remember these half-lives. 25-hour half-life is, uh, you got to multiply it by four or five. That's how long it's going to be in your system when you take it. This isn't like taking an aspirin and, uh, for a headache and then within 30 minutes, all your headache is gone. It's out of your system within like four hours. No, this is, this is very different. So, you know, at the end of the day, guys, it just, it, guys have to understand how powerful these half-life of these drugs are. They were not designed to be in and out of your system fast. So that's another thing where guys screw up is they take it every day, a lot every day. And it builds up in their system at high dosages, and then it gets them in trouble. So, Rick, you want to finish up with telling us where do we where we can find aromacin? Is it easily available, and is it expensive? Aromacin is one of the easiest ones to get. It's not criminalized like steroids or testosterone, you know, would. So, you're going to have a much easier time finding aromacin. There are different brands. You can find it human grade. You can find it research grade. You can buy the powders overseas. I mean, aromacin is it's going to be a pretty easy one, easy one to find. It's not, it's not criminalized. Uh, you won't, uh, if you possess it, you won't get in much trouble for it. If you are selling it to people, that's a different story. If you're making it for people, that's a different story, I think. But as long as you are just um, possessing it and using it, can't get in much trouble. And because of the legal status of it, there'll be no shortage of of people out there that'll be willing to provide you with it. So it's, it's not bad. You know, if you, you can still find a at some, at some supplement stores and that one is naturally occurring. And that one is going to probably be banned from supplements soon, but a stain works uh, a lot like aromacin. You need a much higher dose of it than you do aromacin. But also, if you walk, walk into a local supplement store and ask them for arimistain, it's a pretty effective uh, anti-estrogen. I don't sell it through N2BM at the moment. We used to. We had a product called Liquidex AI that had arimistain in it. Very, very effective aromatase inhibitor. But we, we've discontinued the product, and uh, we haven't made any more of, of that yet. But the other brands out there that do have them, and a lot of supplement store has it. If you want the, an option that you can find right now over the counter, arimistane works, works very well, very much like aromacin. Again, you need higher dosing, more of it. You need about, depending on how much you're taking, you need about 75, maybe 100 milligrams a day, maybe 50 milligrams a day is where you want to be at. Uh, and that's comparable to 
you know, aromasin on the on the lower end. But yeah, I mean, uh, aromasin research, uh, you'll be able to order it online overseas pretty easily. Different brands, generics, pretty easy to find, not criminalized. So yeah, aromasin everywhere. What do you think, Steve? In the United States, you need a prescription for it. Um, if you go to a doctor and, and ask him about aromasin and he knows what it is, there's a good chance you'll get a prescription for it if he's an um, endocrinologist or an anti-aging clinic. Um, but I'm curious to hear overseas, is it, is it going to be found in pharmacies or what are the more common AIs that you can find in the pharmacies overseas where PEDs are, are legalized? Well, since all of these are cancer drugs that women use, breast cancer spread across the globe, they're pretty easy to find. I mean, same place where you can buy testosterone over the counter, you can get tamoxifen, you can get tamoxifen, you can get Clomid, you can get aromasin, you can get any of these cancer drugs over the counter. It's pretty easy to find, uh, pretty inexpensive too. All right, guys. So that sums it up for aromasin, guys. Um, pretty much nailed everything about aromasin. Remember, blood work is going to be the key, guys. Don't go into this blind and just assume, yeah, I feel this way, so my estrogen is probably okay. No, you need, you need blood work. Very, very important. It's a blueprint to, uh, to everything. It can make all the world a difference in your success on cycle, post-cycle, and in between cycles. For Steve Smee Rick, another episode of Oceanair Radio. We will talk about another chemical on next week's show. Have a good one, guys. Have a good one, Steve. Have a good one, guys. Guys, this is the required legal disclaimer. We are only sharing our experience from years of steroid use. We are not doctors, and none of what we say should be regarded as medical advice. Always check with your doctor before taking any drugs or starting any training program.